Okay. Um, hello and welcome to my presentation. I will be talking about the outline of my paper, which is closely related to my semester's project, um, thinking about the post-Anthropocene and tracing the human traces. And I will put this into context with the topics of our readings through the last weeks. And just like in these three microscopic images you see of different human-made materials of plastic, aluminum and cardboard paper, I want to change the scale in which we think about the human age. And first I want to talk about the text by Anita Burris Basia about the limits of process and how we should see landscapes not as static images but living and dynamic environments. And linking this with the excursion uh, through the Highland Boundary Fault Line, talking about geology and the processes behind the formation of all of Scotland and how geology very much is a series of long-lasting processes going far beyond human dimensions, and how it's basically the foundation of, um, of life, and how geology influences um, the formation of a site through um, the formation of soil and topography, um, how it's influencing the ecology and the visual perception of a landscape, but also how geology influences uh, human culture and the way we inhabit these sites, work with and uh, use the landscapes. And it made me think about the, the text again, uh, the limits of process. And I think we are limiting our own understanding of uh, landscape, because we like to think about landscape maybe changing during the seasons of a year, uh, from spring to winter, or maybe over multiple years, um, the growth and decay of vegetation and the development of patina. And I want to add the idea of geologic processes into this, um, how the site has developed in the past, thousands and millions of years ago, and how it will develop in the future. And for that we have to leave behind the human scale, both physical, a physical scale and in time scale, in order to think about landscape also as its geology. And, um, during the excursion, I tried to capture um, the fragile human traces before they might disappear now that we think about them on a geologic timeline. And some traces already are thousands of years old and they already lost some of their original meaning before they physically disappear. And like these cave and carvings or the standing stones on the Isle of Arran. And I want to link this to the text from W.G.J. Mitchell when he said that Landscape is not a genre of art, but a medium, um, a network of cultural codes. And he compares it to, to a language um, or to paint, so a form of communication. And when you look at these landscapes, they are very much able to tell the story of the um, human history and the way we claimed the, these lands, how we left our first marks and how quickly we will disappear again, uh, leaving behind more questions than answers. Talking about the storytelling capacities of the landscape, I want to talk about uh, the text by Brad Milligan and his research through design fieldwork, and in particular his experiment um, where he created his own grass graffiti to join the graffiti war that he was analyzing, uh, where he was literally tagging the landscape, marking his territory and also mapping the human movement through it. And um, as soon as I looked at it, I thought about Richard Long's work from 1967, A Line Made by Walking, where he was literally walking up and down the field until the grass flattened, creating a visible trace of his um, hike. And looking at these two images, they are so similar, but at the same time so different. But for me, they I use both of them as a metaphor for the uh, fleeting human traces that um, in which we are tagging the landscape, leaving our footprints, marking our territory, but um, sooner or later they will all disappear um, and they will be overgrown or just um, completely be forgotten. And that does not only apply to these two images, but also to all of the images I showed you previously, from the ancient graffitis and carved on the walls, um, from the footprints in the sand to the erected pillars out of uh, stone and steel. And I want to end my presentation with one open-ended question. Um, thinking about these geologic processes and the bigger-than-human timelines, about a time after our human impact, um, about the post-Anthropocene, 
uh, thinking about our past, present and future traces, um, what will we leave behind? Is it only going to be the litter we leave in the oceans, the microplastics and nuclear wastes in the soils uh, and the pollutions in the atmosphere? Or is it something more meaningful perhaps? Something that can tell the legacy and history of the human era? Or maybe we manage to leave behind no traces at all? Which sounds scary, but um, I think it's also a beautiful idea. These are my quick references. Uh, this is my literature. I'm talking about the three um, works from our course, but also thinking about um, papers talking about the post-Anthropocene and also the evolution of um, graffiti.